Christian, yes. how are you? Oh, I'm doing okay. Um, for our, our viewers, you might notice the sun change in attire from the last recording where we were in t-shirts and sunshine. Now I'm wearing like a layer of fleece and long sleeves and should have like gloves and mitten on. And I'm wearing a uh, heavy leather coat with a uh, fur collar, re really fur lining Which and a pretty, sweatshirt. Pretty standard. Summertime. Yeah, pretty whatever. summertime. Some, pretty standard affair up here, right? Well, for you. So. Leather. I do wear a lot of leather. I love it. Uh, we are drinking some good rye whiskey here. Uh, Clyde Mays out of Alabama. Straight rye whiskey, 94 proof. We need that 94 proof. We need to taste that spice. We need to taste that rye because both of us have been under the weather. I still got my under the weather voice. My low. It's actually really sexy. My low um, and I assure you. Hello, listeners. Mm. Subscribe to the Old Fashioned mm. Dad podcast. If nothing, if, if you don't like the content, subscribe for the voice. Um, <laughs> I assure you, listeners and viewers, we do not have the Rona. So Rona. we're not wearing masks for this episode. So we hope that you're okay with that. You okay with that? I don't give a crap what our listeners think. Oh. <laughs> well, all right then. Okay, not, not entirely. Just. We, we care. Whether or not they care if we wear masks we, or not. Uh, that's what I don't care about. We're not going to wear, we don't want to transmit Rona over the digital airwaves. Yeah, so. digital, the, uh, the ones and zeros. All right, Christian, what are we talking about today? I think we've prolonged the inevitable. Well, um, don't we need to do that thing where we say, mm. ready, set, right. go. We are the Old Fashioned Dad Podcast, seeking to love dads and men through the person and work of Jesus Christ while entering into tough conversations on marriage, mental health, sex, and parenting, all while sipping good whiskey. Well, um, it is my uh, pleasure, honestly, to uh, jump into the topic at hand, which would be kind of a kind of a brief topic, but yeah. I, special I think, episode. If you special will. episode. This special would be kind episode. of the. Uh, I even came with notes too. Prepared. I put notes together, which I may have to at some point like grab and pull up and and uh, look well, at. It's very fitting considering our topic. Yeah. So um, many of you probably have heard on this uh, podcast, uh, one or both of us refer to another podcast called the Just Thinking Podcast. And I realized I could have said podcast a lot less there, but I didn't, and I went with saying podcast more. Hmm. So, nevertheless. Uh, we got introduced to the Just Thinking podcast uh, a year or more ago. Probably about a year ago, a little, little after we started our, our podcast. Um, I think you brought it to my attention as we were kind of seeing culture shift radically and rapidly. Um, and there wasn't a lot of resources on like how to deal with that biblically. Yeah, and to my surprise, um, the Just Thinking podcast had been going on, uh, I think, since like 2017. They've been around for that long, and uh, when I found them, I just gobbled up uh, the first episode. I think the first episode that I listened to was either the one on Breonna Taylor uh, or the one on uh, uh, George Floyd. Now, who is them? They're more than just this this ethereal podcast. They're they're real people. Yeah. So the the founders, the creators of the Just Thinking podcast, uh, Daryl Harrison and Virgil Walker. Very and smart. Uh, yeah. We're, we're kind of we're kind of fanboys. We're, 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 we're fanboys. might we're going to fanboy this. Yeah, if we see them somewhere at like a conference, we might squeal a little. Yeah. Yeah. I I'll buy them a drink and I'll buy them dinner. Yeah. Um, okay. I'll let you buy them dinner and I'll join you. And I'll let you <laughs> I'll let you let me buy them dinner. <laughs> uh, and Daryl uh, he's out in California. I, I don't think he actually does uh, preaching from the pulpit. I could be wrong, like Virgil does. But um, he does a lot of things for uh, uh, John MacArthur uh, and John MacArthur's ministry. I think he's like dean of social media over at John MacArthur uh, Ministries. And, uh, and then both of them just actually ended up doing uh, a big uh, conference, the G3 conference, yep. uh, which... I want to try and go to next year. Yeah. Well, and then the next week they did one where our friend Katie, uh, right, Katie Faust met up with them. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, I thought that was actually at G3. That no, was something else. That was different. Yeah. She didn't make it to G3. She oh wow. The... Okay. So something else. So something completely something completely different. But um, so 
If you want to know more about the bona fides of uh, Daryl and uh, Virgil, you can certainly go listen. I mean, I would recommend go listen to the podcast itself. Uh, there's well over 100 episodes, each one being, you know, I think at minimum an hour. Um, oh, at least. I uh, mean, yeah, at le- I don't think I've come across one less than two hours so yeah. far, but and, and all well worth it. I mean. Yeah, each one is like you're getting a like a college study, college classroom level um, lecture and dialogue on uh, a particular cultural topic. Uh, with biblical exposition. Right. When you say lecture, you make it sound boring. That's what I think of. But they're very entertaining to listen to. It's not only yeah. do they have copious notes and reference to scripture. Um, I mean, like when I started listening to them, I had to like pause it and like look up words. and like, what, what, is this, what does this word mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I actually found myself. So one of the episodes that I um, find myself continuously going back to over and over again is the episode on critical race theory, which was like close to three hours long, or maybe yeah. it actually was three hours long. Um, I remember listening to it on a flight down to Arizona last year. Um, and then on the way back, I was listening to it and I was like pausing every single sentence because it felt like every single sentence was gold. Yeah. Just so meaty. And mm, it good. took me six hours to get through a three hour podcast. <laughs> Um, it could just be uh, where well, you were intellectually, probably. And I'm a slow learner. I'm probably, a slow learner. Yeah, the Holy Spirit works slow in me. Yeah, our our podcast is much more lowbrow. Yeah, that's uh, why we have theirs. the whiskey <laughs> and the cigar. That's why don't we don't do any research? We're just like, oh yeah, my opinion. This yeah, thing. this is my opinion. But uh, uh, there's is much. There, there's much better, theirs so. is actually factual. Yeah. They 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 don't go based off of their opinion. They go based off of what the you know what Scripture says, what Bible says. Here we try to be scripturally based, which um, I hope that's what we're doing, but there is a lot more um, opinion that I think is rooted in scripture. Yeah, love, yeah, that's, yeah. But but why why the long Why the why long, the long intro, the, the glowing fanboy yeah. intro? I mean, yes. people have heard about the podcast uh, because, you know, we, we mentioned it and reference it and stuff, but uh, why is today's episode, for for lack of a better term, uh, dedicated uh, important to uh, to them. Import, the significant. Let's yes. go with significant. Okay, significant. Yeah, significant. Well, so um, Daryl and Virgil uh, decided to uh, drop a knowledge bomb on mm-hmm. all of us um, if the podcast wasn't enough. But they wanted to give us, the readers, the masses, Christian community, uh, a hard copy book that we could look at that explores... Uh, some really timely cultural issues with a uh, biblical exposition of those cultural issues Ooh, and, like and how we as Christians should be uh, looking at the culture, the spirit of the age of our time uh, through a biblical lens. So we are reviewing. So we book, uh, are reviewing this book right here. By we, mostly Christian B. Uh, just thinking about the state. This is this book right here. And you see all those uh, yellow tabs and, and whatnot? Those are just the, the places where <laughs> I marked, uh, like, I need to remember this. Those are just the best of places? Yeah, those are the much. best of places. This book is heavily marked up. <laughs> um, there is so much in here that, honestly, an episode, which we're going to try and keep to around 30 minutes, is not going to do this book justice. So our biggest recommendation is go out and buy this book. Um, yeah, you like, will not be sorry. Like, buy it as I'm talking to you. Um, and you will not be sorry. Uh, just to give you kind of a, before I get into my, my, my stuff, just to give you kind of an idea of what you're looking at in terms of the um, chapters in this book, is they, adri- they adri- so there's, there's 10 total chapters, and each one of them are quick reads, is uh, you're, you're, they're addressing government. So they're looking at government from a biblical lens. They're looking at understanding socialism and capitalism from a biblical lens. I particularly found those really, really good and important um, because I've always kind of understood socialism and capitalism from maybe from like a very loose contextual um, place, but they give some really grounded uh, facts on what socialism is and then a biblical understanding of, well, uh, no, we don't agree with socialism. And, uh, and then they go through capitalism. And then they even, they, they, they really do take social justice and social savior stuff to task, which I find, I just, I love that piece because I've always struggled with like, well, how do I address the, yeah. the social um, justice warrior movement type things? Then they, then this one was a little bit more unexpected is they get into, for a couple of chapters, uh, abortion. 
uh, but I really, really appreciated uh, the chapters on abortion. And honestly, the more books that I'm reading uh, right now from Christian authors, they're really starting to get into this, like really taking um, America's death cult to, again, to task. Um, then there's one other that I really, really appreciated that I, I've just never known how to talk about or think about, but I've always like, man, that doesn't sit well with me, is the uh, topic of reparations. Like, I, I just, especially as a white person, I just, I have, um, I felt like, well, I just, I, I, I can't have any say on this. I don't know anything sure. about it. And so I think they really did a, a great job of, of looking at uh, each one of these topics uh, through a biblical lens. And so here's the thing with this book is uh, their facts and their knowledge on these things, they're historians first and foremost, right? They, they say that a lot in their episodes. Historians and theologians, I mean, they do a great job of meshing, uh, you know, the, the context of scripture with the historical, uh, you know, facts of uh, history. Yeah, but they, but they love, they love uh, going back historically and looking at um, how did something become something or why are we doing things the way that we're doing? Yeah. And, and, and another thing that especially Daryl likes to say a lot uh, on, on the show is we define words. We define words. And so um, and defining words uh, matters. So they define words and they turn pages. That's what they do. Yep. Right, guys? Yep. Right, Daryl? Right, Virgil, if you're listening and you're watching. If. <laughs> <laughs> they listen to every episode. Oh, man. Yeah, they better at least listen to this oh, one. Oh, jeez. I hope so. I don't know. Um, They're busy guys. They are busy guys. Um, if they give our podcast five minutes, that'd be great. Yeah. Well, i got to keep this episode to five minutes then. <laughs> um, one of the things I, I love about this, and yes. I, and I because when you pick this up, you bought me a copy, which I appreciate. Uh, I am not as quick a reader as you, apparently. Um, I'm not totally done, but halfway done. But... Uh, what I like, because this is just thinking about the state, yes, right? And yes. they are actually doing uh, three books. They're, they're doing a trilogy. So this is the first of three. They're doing the, about the state. Uh, I don't remember what the other two are, but it gives me, you know, more reading to look forward to the next couple of years as they come out yeah. with those books. Yeah, um, I think they mentioned that in one of their episodes. They, they did. I, I don't remember what the other two were, but... It's one of the more recent epo- episodes, like within the last, yeah. you know, five episode or six. Episode one, 11, 113, something yeah. like that. Um, but they are going to release two more books. Um, and uh, so this one's really addressing kind of like government and culture. And the next two are going to like, um, I think again, narrow down the scope. Uh, so government and culture is fairly broad. I think there's going to narrow down the scope to um, a couple of other topics. Yep. So let's get into this. Huh? <clears throat> yeah. So um, I'm going to grab my notes. Look at that. Look at that. I wrote stuff. Um, so I came up with, why I think this book is important, and again, why you should um, go get it. You know, apart from its looking at culture from a biblical lens and how to respond as Christians. So it's, it's preparing us, it's giving us insight, but it stands upon the word alone. It, it's Daryl and Virgil are constantly going back uh, to God's word and letting God's word stand alone and letting God's word interpret um, the times that we're in and how we should respond. And so in each chapter, here's like the number one thing that I really, really appreciate is that they rightly identify what the problem is, right? And the problem is and always has been and will be until Jesus comes back is sin. The problem is sin. And so they they, they go through, um, uh, especially at chapters on uh, socialism, especially chapters on uh, abortion, especially chapters on uh, reparations. Sure, social justice. The yeah. problem isn't uh, isn't injustice; it's sin. Yeah. So, and and they and they look at each issue, you know, because each 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 particular um, issue, they they will say maybe. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm probably using this word out of context, but Daryl likes using it a lot. Uh, and I really appreciate it. I, I, I've started to incorporate it in my own uh, vocabulary. Is germane? Mm. Yes, it's germane to the situation. Hopefully, I didn't mess that up. But they rightly identify uh, the problem uh, in each of these chapters that it's sin. Man has a sinful heart, and man has been um, sinful since uh, the beginning, since the the fall. Right. Right. Which is not. Uh 
as Bible believing Christians is nothing that should be groundbreaking. Like we should understand that. But I mean, one of the things that they point out in the book, I don't want to steal your thunder here, but Please that, I, that I thought I'm like, I read it. I'm like, damn, they're calling it out. Uh, was that he said the, the they said the majority of Christians in America don't have a biblical worldview, and I'm like, she's probably right, you know, and that's yes, why I think a, yes. a book like this is so good because it's not this is how I feel or this is you know contextualizing the gospel today's culture and you know morphing it and redefining it. They're like, we may feel a certain way and culture may be going a certain way, but what's God say? That's exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. Okay, moving on to point two. Why you should go get this book. I'm going to sound like a broken record through all this, I promise you. But it is this book, Daryl and Virgil are rightly interpreting our current times and social issues through a biblical lens. Okay? Like, I can't emphasize that anymore because uh, a lot of our culture and a lot of our society says, um, well, stuff like the Bible, you can kind of pick and choose uh, what you want. But by and large, uh, when it comes to cultural issues, the Bible is antiquated. Um, it sure, is. We live in a post culture. We live post in a Christian. We live in a post post country. Yeah. Uh, Christian world, and so uh, Bible is not authority. Um, Bible. Mean, it is. It's just not to society. It's it's it it's somewhere in the authority. Whoever's on top, I don't know as far as the world is concerned, uh, what their number one authority is. But the Bible is not. And so Daryl and Virgil. Um, in their book, rightly look at all these issues, cultural and social, uh, from a biblical lens. And that biblical lens constantly is saying, we stand on Scripture alone. Scripture is God's full authority. Um, so another reason to go uh, buy the book. Thirdly, um, it's properly identifying and then dissecting the sin that is the, that is that is at the center of um, of these major social issues. Now, that might sound like I'm repeating number one where it says they rightly identify the problem, which is sin. So yes, they do that, but then they dissect the sin that is at the core. And and, and why I say that is because you go into, um, I think it's chapter five on um, abortion, uh, and they called that the, that chapter is called the Born Alive Act. And on that particular chapter, um, I've never really, you know, thought about it up until maybe uh, the last couple of years, but um, abortion is really tackling uh, this issue of imago dei and then human autonomy, and they they really they really take pro-choice people as lovingly as they can uh, to task by saying like, no, no, we don't have we don't have a right to uh, extinguish another image bearer of God, especially one that is innocent and hasn't had a chance to live outside uh, right. the womb. And and then furthermore, like abortion is kind of the, the height, the height of audacity uh, in us saying we want to be autonomous from God. We want to do what we want apart from God. Right. Well, one of the things that I really appreciate about this book, because I mean, obviously the, it's geared towards Christians, right? Yep. And I think the the whole reason, uh, you know, at the risk of putting words in their mouth, maybe they said this somewhere, uh, what their intention is, but it seems like uh, it's it's addressing uh, things that are antithetical to Christians, but that Christians are believing over Scripture, mm-hmm. um, which really comes back to that a lot of Christians in America don't have a, a, a biblical worldview. And so they break down kind of each of these, these topics and say, you know, th- these are the reasons why you know, this idea, this social thing is antithetical, is, a, is an alternative gospel to the real gospel. Um, and they're always pointing back to Jesus, always pointing back to the, to the gospel and how you can't, you know, believe two contrary things uh, and still call yourself a Christian. Yeah, no, good point. No, that, that's a great point. And there goes the fire truck. Yeah, nice fire truck. Right on. Oh, no, I love it when big trucks nice. go by on the roads as we're uh, recording. As your one lane road, yeah. essentially. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, number four, it's rightly applying, so again, another reason to buy this book, it's rightly applying scriptural truth to real world problems. Um, again, it sounds like I'm repeating myself, but uh, we have problems like racism and marriage and sexuality and divorce and, you know, the list can go on and lots of people look at scripture and say like, well, yeah, that's great for salvation, but I don't know how that helps me in my day to day or how that helps me. Um, in my ethnicity or race, or how that helps me with um, 
uh, equality or gender equality or sexuality or I, anything else that might be considered an issue, uh, they go through line by line applying um, Puritan theology. Like they use a lot of theo theology uh, from the Puritans as well as um, that obviously comes from scripture and straight scripture to um, apply to these particular Issue. So again, they have a very high view uh, of Scripture, saying like, no, Scripture does not return void. It can be utilized uh, in absolutely every single one of these to the glory of God. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah all right. Mm, I concur. Okay, this one I find really important. Moving on to number five. We've got about, I don't know, we got about four left here. And maybe we'll, maybe we'll be done. This one's really important. This is really just kind of a theme in general that runs through the Just Thinking podcast, and uh, and, and I can see it and read it uh, through the book. Is there's a there's a just a general call for all Christians to increase their biblical literacy. Yeah, that's really important. Really, really important. You see that B on the top of it? I do. <laughs> it actually flew in front of the camera, so we'll see if that's it, pretty if awesome. Picked up. Anyway, anyway, so it's it's important. Um, and, and they make this point for Christians to increase their biblical literacy. Like when you know the Word of God and you know what God says, it's much easier to stand against a hostile culture. It's, it's much easier to love your enemy. It's, it's much easier to not engage right. in um, maybe some of the lowbrow fighting that you might find with um, people that are not Christians or maybe even people that don't have you know uh, depth to their theology. Right. Well, even... Before that, it, it'll help you from getting duped into social movements like Black Lives Matter or social justice or CRT that are alternative gospels. You won't, you won't fall for them in the first place, or you'll have a foundation to be like, this, this doesn't feel right. There's something that's, that doesn't align with, with God here. Right, yes, yes. So the, the increase in biblical literacy should do something to your relationship with God. It uh, should rightly put God on the throne and, and see that um, it's only God. It's only ever been God. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died for our sins, um, and he rose, and now he offers his saving grace, um, and we just simply need to uh, accept it, and that's the thing that saves us. That's, it's, it's not a social justice movement. It's not CRT. It's not BLM. Um, it's not white supremacy. It's um, not, I don't know, whatever fill the blank in is. It's only Christ. It's only ever been Christ. And it will only ever be Christ. And so they rightly um, call us to more biblical literacy so that we understand that and we get that deep in our souls. Daryl and Virgil, I, I really do appreciate that point and that point um, alone um, out of all the points that you make. Okay, number six. <clears throat> I think this one's important. All these are important. I don't know why I keep saying this one's important. Th all of them are important. Um, there is a strong call in this book for men and women to engage in the worship of Christ as opposed to worship of a political party. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I whoa, know, whoa. I know. You're Christian. Is that, do I need to say Christian. that twice? Is it so nice I need to say it twice? That's, that's just... Hammond B3 yeah, moment right here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me say it again. It calls for men and women to engage in the worship of Christ as opposed to worship of a political party. We'll be that was our Hammond B3 That's, our B3. Right That's all I got, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Can't even add it in post. Um, folks, dads, moms, anybody that's listening, anybody that's watching, this should be a no-brainer if you're a Christian. Like, your political party is not going to save you, you know? But I voted in my savior. What are you talking about? Did you vote Jesus in? Yeah, I voted, well, yeah. Them, <laughs> that I should have. Maybe that's, maybe that's why we're not in this, maybe that's why we're in this situation. <laughs> didn't know Jesus. Right in, Jesus. Republican, Democrat, <clears throat> left, uh, right, liberal, conservative, sorry people, none of those save. Will not save us. They will not save you. They will leave you disappointed every single time. Doesn't mean every politics doesn't matter, time. but they will not save you. They will not save you. They will not save you, and we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Number seven. And this is another theme that, as I've listened to more and more of their podcasts and, uh, and I see in the book, uh, they talk about partiality. And this has been uh, a word that has become more prevalent for me over this last couple of years, uh, well, since 2020, is they, they call for children of God 
So believers, worshipers, if you're a non-believer, we're called children of God, worshipers of God. Um, call for children of God to disengage. These are my words here. Disengage from the sin of partiality. Now, you know, it's interesting you bring that up because I remember the first episode I was listening to of theirs, mm. and they were talking about partiality a lot. Yeah. And they explained it uh, and kept going back to Scripture how it says that God is, you know, against partiality. You know, he, he doesn't see skin color, uh, you know, not to show partiality for the rich or for the poor, and explaining it in the context of, you know, CRT and Black Lives Matter and, and you know, kind of that idea. And I'm just like, I've never thought about it that way. Like, I, I've never heard a sermon or a theological, <clears throat> theological exposition talking about how, I mean, it's essentially pure equality, you know, as far as, as what God, how God sees equality, which is everyone is the same. It doesn't matter your social standing, skin color, like we're all, you know, Imago Dei, we're all... Uh, we're all the human image, race. Right, we're all, you know, right? made in the image of God. And partiality uh, detracts from that. Like, it, 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 it destroys the Imago Dei. It, it cre- I mean, and this, is, and this is what Satan has known for a long time, is, you know, uh, he'll use partiality to create division. You see division amongst gender. You see di- division amongst sex. You see division um, amongst uh, ethnicity and race. Political parties. And political parties. Status, I mean, literally thing, anything. Yeah, anything. Bi- you see division amongst people that own Nike versus uh, Reebok. Right. I mean, big, manly, girthy beards and little, mm, you little know. Little baby beards. Little baby beards. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen to this. Okay, and I've read this before, but James chapter 2. Uh, my brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if Can I just stop right there? It says, my brothers, show no partiality. That's not a suggestion. It's not a like, hey guys, you know, maybe, maybe don't show partiality. You know, I don't know. That's a command. That, that, like, that's a command. Right. And, and another word for partiality would be like favoritism, right? <laughs> a, a preference for one over a the prefer- other. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in the good place, while well, you say to the poor man, you stand over here or sit down at my feet, have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you, the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? I'm going to keep reading here. If you really fulfill the royal law according to scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you're committing sin. Oh, what? Okay, I'm going to say it again. But if you show partiality, <coughs> you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever, for whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so speak and so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Lot there. Lot to unpack. Go talk to Virgil and Daryl about those scriptures because they're going to give you way better answers uh, than I will be able to. I'm just this uh, weakened warrior theologian over here. Right, you two? Uh, I'm not even that. I mean, I want to be, but I get caught up on the big words that they use. <laughs> Germain. 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 Show no partiality. There's a constant call uh, in their podcast and the book to show no partiality. And I think that is something that every single Christian needs to hear. Um, number eight. This is really important. Also, where's the non important one coming? Because there, no there, no, there is no non important one. There is an important one. All right. Not important one. They emphasize in this book the Imago Day. We are image bearers of God. We are image bearers of God. And that comes out um, in chapters 5 and 6. Um, chapter 5 is on the born, uh, alive act, tackling abortion. And then chapter 6 is uh, abortion and Black Lives Matter. And they tackle the Imago Dei and the importance of the Imago Dei. We are made in the image of God because God decided to make us in his image. And therefore, we have value. Value 
has already been given to us. Life um, has been given to us. So and they, they tackle that. And so that's really, really important for all Christians to know, Imago Dei. That shouldn't just be like, yeah, 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 I made in the image of God. It should be like, wow, I'm made in the image of God. Okay. Number nine, the last one. A lot of trucks on this road today. Mm. Number nine, last one. It rightly places scripture into a category of one, sola scriptura. Throwing some, uh, what is that, Latin? Latin, yeah. Latin. So, throwing some Latin at you. Okay, sola scriptura. Daryl and Virgil stand upon scripture alone. That's what, that's what sola scriptura means. And they stand, good reformed. Any good Reformed person does. That's right. <clears throat> and I, I would venture to say, I'm going to throw some more Latin at you, mm -hmm. that it's not just sola scriptura that they stand on, but they stand on sola Christus, sola fide, sola gratia. I hope I said that right. Sola Deo Gloria. Mm. Okay. Scripture alone, Christ alone, faith alone, grace alone. To God's glory. To God's glory. <laughs> I had to look at the right, to look at the writing, to God's glory. That's what Reformed theologians believe, and this is what they stand upon, and this is what we, at the Old Fashioned Dad podcast, stands on, and so we're in agreement with our brothers Daryl and Virgil. Yeah. So that's a very long, long-winded way to say we approve this book. We give it two. We thumbs up. approve this book. Um, so I, I think I've probably given enough, at least in my opinion. Uh, <clears throat> enough of a case to go buy this book, uh, especially for uh, the Christian brother, the Christian sister uh, that is out there that is looking to address these cultural uh, issues through a biblical lens. If you, if you want to know more about socialism, this is a great book and, and how to respond to it um, in a uh, biblical way. There's a lot of resources within this book and a lot of quotes within this book that they give you that, that will allow you to go down the theological and uh, yeah theological rabbit hole farther if you want to, yeah. but I think that this gives a uh, I don't want to say a thirty thousand foot view because that feels like it'd be too broad. I think they kind of go around ten thousand feet. Ten thousand feels about right. Yeah, yeah. ten thousand feet, ten thousand foot view uh, of these particular <coughs> issues. Um, it's a book that I personally will come back to over and over and over again because there's just so much meat there that I think they they word stuff up in a way that. It's, it's, it's great to be able to put into um, an argument. And they don't put this book out here so that you can just go argue with somebody. But they put this book out here for us Christian brothers and sisters so that um, we can have intelligent conversation. Conversation? Conversation. Intelligent conversation um, and loving conversation with those who disagree with us. But they want us to stand firm on Scripture. And we, they want us to stand firm on God's truth. And they want us to be image bearers of God. And they want us to hold that in, in, in sanctity. Um, and they and they want us to increase our biblical literacy, ultimately, so that we are glorifying God and that God's glory resonates in the entirety of the earth. Amen. So, yeah. well, and one thing I in, I enjoy not only with their what they do with the podcast, but they also with the book, is that everything is referenced. I mean, the the footnotes like they're not just winging anything, <laughs> you know, which yeah. is the opposite of us, yeah. uh, where we wing everything. We wing a lot of things. Um, but but I love it because it's not just like some random like statement, you know, of of truth yeah. or my opinion. You know, if they're stating something, they're backing it up with scripture or with research or with history or whatever. Yeah, these are studied men, and what you're getting is a um, graduate level education for free when you listen to both of these men. I do feel smarter after I listen. When you listen to us, you're getting an elementary education. <laughs> you actually might be getting dumber. <laughs> I don't think you're getting dumber. We're just, we're the beginning spot. We're yeah, the, we're, we're the... That's where you begin. They're the meat. You, gra the you, you graduate to, yeah. <laughs> to the meat of the just thinking gentleman. Okay. Is that fair? Is that is that a good... Uh, we're, yeah, we're good, good on that? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, two thumbs up, four, four thumbs up for uh, just thinking about the state. We are excited for uh, the next book. If you guys, uh, Daryl and Virgil, can get right on that. Yeah, and then sign it and send us a copy. Yeah. That would be great. <laughs> um, Daryl and Virgil, uh, as, as uh, brothers uh, in Christ uh, up in Seattle, we may never meet you, but uh, we sincerely have benefited greatly from uh, your reading and your ministries and uh, we are attempting to uh, engage culture 
in the ways that you yeah. outline in the book as is it's biblical, it's scriptural. Yeah. In our own sophomoric ways. In our own sophomoric ways. <laughs> We appreciate you guys and all the listeners. Thank so you. Hopefully everyone got something out of this. To our listeners, thank you for enduring our first um, book review. If it goes well and it's received well, maybe we'll do more. Um, I guess it's not technically our total, our first first book review. We've done uh, them before us. Uh, it wasn't which, really a book review. That was more like we gave them airtime. A book synopsis? Yeah, because Katie and Stacey do a much better job uh, talking than we do. That's right. Yeah. Um, also another great book to check out then before us yep. uh, right, right in line with uh, yeah. same, same, kind of, but, same kind of stuff but the book today that we are endorsing Just Thinking About the State Daryl Harrison, Virgil Walker um, go get it, go read it put it in your um, library, carry it around in your backpack um, in the meantime I have really greatly appreciated all the individuals reaching out to us on uh, Instagram uh, mostly that's where I see them but on Instagram and uh, you've had a couple on Facebook and uh, YouTube. And so we've greatly appreciated the encouragement. Please do continue to uh, reach out. That helps us feel encouraged to continue to do this. Uh, if you feel so inclined, actually, we would just simply ask you, please leave a review. That, that's helpful to us as we would love to continue to get this content um, out there. We are kind of weekend warrior. I'm going to use that phrase again. Weekend warrior mm. podcasters where we are. We record this on Thursdays, but that's fine. I understand what you mean. Oh, sorry. Secret. We don't record it. Don't tell you what's running one yeah, of the weekends. But, right you know, now. we're, you know, we work full-time jobs and we are um, fully engaged with our kids uh, as much as possible. Th that makes us look good, right? Yeah, and just say we're good dads. And we're good we're, dads. We're great dads. We're great dads. Never fail. Um, Never lose our temper. So, in the meantime, we love you. We're praying for you. Please do reach out um, and keep up being a great dad. Enjoy some great whiskey and a cigar if you get an opportunity. Until next time, Christian. Mm, cheers. Cheers. Yes.